Okay guys, JH, welcome to Practice T. Okay, today I want to talk about, and we're over with the cows again. I actually like it over here, I said that yesterday. But I do like it over here. Because you're always worried down there, because so many people down there, someone's going to come up and just, and it happens. <laughs> it happens two or three times a week where people come over and I've done 15 minutes of a, of a video and they'll walk straight into it, they just don't see it. But over here, they'd have to walk through the bulls and the cows to get here. And there's enough bull right here to stop most people. Okay, today we want to talk about radius lock in the golf swing. What is radius lock? Radius lock is if we were a robot and we were here and we were fixed in place, that club would have exactly the same radius applied to it every time the robot moved. Stay there for two years club would never hit the ground but if somebody if if the club was going back and somebody pushed the robot forward a little bit club would go into the ground or someone got above and pushed the the robot down on the downswing club would go into the ground or conversely if someone had a hook around the robot and as it started down to pull the robot up it topped the golf ball so what am I saying there guys? So all we have to do is, is maintain the fixed radius of the golf swing that we set at address. Now how do we do that and where is the fixed radius of the golf swing? For me, it's right at the back of my neck, at the top of my spine. When I, when I get here, in this position here, at address, all I want to do is feel that that back of my neck position in the golf swing never changes. First shot of the day guys. That's just a beautiful golf shot. And I've got to tell you guys, that's the good thing about channel lock. Apply the protocol, you get the protocol result. And that's the simplicity. I'll go over that again, guys. The only difference between your good shots on channel lock and your not so good shots is that when you're not so good shots, you're not doing what you do on your good shots. Simplicity. That, that's in a conventional golf swing. But the good thing about channel lock, we've got something to think about, some building blocks. And all we have to do is just build the blocks. Just build the little pyramid. Don't leave anything off the pyramid. But uh, I digress. But so guys, all, all I'm doing now is I'm maintaining that, that position here. I'm really working on five o'clock nose. The five o'clock nose helps that because as soon as the five o'clock nose goes to a 10 o'clock nose, here, we've lost that back section here. If the 5 o'clock nose on the downswing moves here, that back of my neck has gone up. And guys, I want to talk to you about shoulder plane and how it really works in a golf swing and, and, and how you can have the wrong perception about what you do with your shoulders in the backswing. The shoulders do this, or they should do this on every golf swing you make. If you were standing up here like this and we had a golf ball out here, the shoulders would work like that. They would just go around the spine like that. That's what they do. They would just go around the spine like that. They wouldn't do that and they wouldn't do that. They do that and that. Now the only thing that changes, guys, and makes it look like the, the lead shoulder is going down, the right shoulder up, is the back angle. I've changed my back angle, but I haven't changed the structure of the shoulder girdle relative to my spine. But it looks like the, the lead shoulder is going down now because my back. See, I'm up here, shoulder's going across there, level. Level. As soon as I change the back angle, it doesn't look level. So don't, don't get in your golf swing and think you've got to fire you know, your lead shoulder down and your right shoulder up and then your right shoulder down. Just try and think that you just want to turn your shoulders level in the backswing. Don't think they're going to pitch or anything, just think you're going to turn them level. And feel that the one thing, once you've got the, you're in position here, you've got your five o'clock nose and as I said yesterday guys, the five o'clock nose is the last part of the protocol before you start your ignition move for the backswing. So we're in position here, we've applied our protocols. Our last protocol is just turning the head to the, to the right.
Now, when you see the good players, and you'll go on a the practice tee at any PGA event, and you'll see the good players, they just hit great shots, and they just hit them, you know, for most of the session. You say, wow, the pros are really good. Yeah, they've got secrets. Well, their, their secret is, guys, they don't move that 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 radius lock of the uh, of the top of the spine very much in their golf swing. They just don't do that. Mo Norman went down. Now, and then people say, oh yeah, but what about Mo Norman? Mo Norman lost height. But Mo Norman lateralized. He 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 buckled, he sit, he sat, and then he and he and he slid forward. Now he could get away with losing height in the downswing because he pulled so hard and he lateralized so hard. But if he if he didn't do that, if he just went here and he just went down like that, he'd stick the club in the ground. But because he pulled so hard and lateralized so hard, he can actually go down and he kept his legs very bent. Yeah, yeah there are a couple of players that Trevino did that to an extent. Um, Tom Lehman does it. So, so there are guys that do that. I think Paul Azinger did it too. But, but generally speaking, guys, you, you, don't want to, you don't want to lose any height. You want to get here, whatever that height is, maintain it. You don't want to change anything. And you've really got to... I'm struggling with the five o'clock nose. And maybe it's just a byproduct of getting old, because, but, I, but I get it here and I think, yeah, I want to do it, and, but I just forget it. Now, I'm not going to forget it. I'm going to drill it in so that it is really, it's just there, because it makes such a difference to the strike. So here I am. I'll talk myself through it. Here, all the protocol, five o'clock nose, and maintain it and keep the radius. And there's the difference there. Now the five o'clock nose was 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 okay, but it's still not nowhere near as absolute and definite as I want it to be. I want it to be like almost like a two count after I've hit the ball. Well, I actually thought I saw the club hit the ball then. And that's what you've got to strive to achieve. That's my old school motto, strive to achieve. That was our school motto, strive to achieve. So you have to, um, you have to strive to achieve that, to actually seeing the club hit the ball. That, that's really good. So here we are, last part of the protocol, really turn it. Oh. It makes such a difference. As Matt Gray said, it's the glue of the channel lock protocol. You get that, guys, and so many of the other things, the prerequisites like the, the closed shoulders and firing the club out happen because of that five o'clock nose. I mean, that was just, just such a nice hit off the club. And I actually saw what I think was the club hit the, <coughs> the ball. So, okay, let, let's practice what we preach. Okay, we're here, we've gone through our protocol. <clears throat> Last part of the protocol. Now, if I can just increase, you know, they're, they're the first shots of the day, so the swing is still a little bit a little bit stiff. Okay, now I'll increase the backswing a little bit. Now guys, that's that's 20 on those other balls. But the other ones were like only a little three-quarter swing. The only problem with being out with the cows here this is right under the flight path. We're 100 metres up here and the plane comes straight over the top. So the 5 o'clock nose is the last part. Now you watch Jack. Look at early Jack. Jack had the best 5 o'clock nose in the business. And this was Jack. 
Jack's ignition move. Jack's ignition move was this. He'd get here and he'd go, and you could see him, he'd go, and that started his golf swing. Okay, Jack was left eye dominant. So it was easy for him to do that and still see the ball. Most people who are right eye dominant, um, talking about that, Herb Goldstein, one of the uh, the uh, channel's subscribers, he came up with a post today and he said, JH, what about an eye patch over the trail eye to make you look at the ball with your lead eye? That's a great idea. If, if you can't see out of your, your trail eye, you have to look at it with the lead eye. And having to look at it with the lead eye makes you turn the, the head. So... So Herb, that's a great idea. We could, we could call those patches eye lock patches. Get yourself an eye lock patch. And I said to, to Herb, you should commercialize that. And, uh, and just um, an eye lock patch, because you put, put it on here and you, you have to look at the ball out of your lead eye. It's a great idea, Herb, great idea. So I'm gonna think I've got a, I think I've got a, uh, I'll actually close my right eye. See, the commitment, it's, it's the hardest thing I've ever done. That, I've got to work out a way of, of once I've got it here, of not letting that thought dissipate in the backswing. Because as soon as I get back to here, it dissipates and I lose it. But I don't want to, I want to still have it at the top of the swing. The strike is so different when you get it. It's the glue, guys. It's, it's what we need. It's the absolute glue of the golf swing. That's all I'm going to be working on predominantly. Is eye lock. We'll call this eye lock. Now I'll really try and see this. Come on, Jade. Come on. You really think think about it. Radius lock, eye lock. There it is, guys. There's eye lock. And you can you can hear the strike. The strike is so much better. Okay, we've covered those points. Now one of the other things that Mr. Rex is doing is he's really connecting up. He's driving that elbow into his body here. He's never done that. Mr. Rex's golf swing has always been here high and wide, now he's here. And all his shots look like punch shots. But they've got tremendous power and uh, economy of movement and motion. And what's he doing guys, he's putting this here. What I do is I basically do that. I, I make my elbow go back, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna jam it here, and the only way it goes back is with the turn of the body. And I'm gonna keep it there on the downswing. And I'm gonna keep pressure on it. I feel like there's a big weight on it here. And, and as I go back, that elbow is down, down, down. If I could scrape my elbow on the ground, I would. Now, what will that do? It does this, guys. It gets that feeling. If I could swing the club here, I'd be on plane. Nobody swings there. But that's plane. Look at this. That's where we should be swinging the golf club. That's shaft plane. We don't swing the club there. Because in the backswing, we go from there, and as the shoulder turn, it elevates the club. But you resist that and push it. Push the club under the shoulder elevation. Which is what Mr. Rex and I were doing yesterday. Now it'll feel like this guy. It'll feel like your hands are going around your ankles, but I promise you. And, and no, no coach in the world would ever teach this. Because they'd say that that's the ultimate uh, opportunity to get stuck. Well, I want to get stuck. Because the more I get stuck there, the better I hit it. So I'm going to really try and force my elbow to scrape the ground and my hands will stay down as well so it'll feel like this this is extreme I didn't do this as extreme yesterday but I'll try it now
when you first do it, you'll think I can't get from here back to the ball. Because my hand, my, my club's almost behind me. Here, I can't get back, but I got back to it perfectly there. It's a scary feeling, absolute scary feeling. Keep the club down. Oh, oh, the feel of that, guys. It's so shallow, it's unbelievable. You could hit shots off the, the putting green, you would never know you'd been there. It's just, it's just glass top table. We're going to polish a glass top table. The, the more I can push down with my hands, and the more I can get my hands going around my thigh on the backswing, the more I'm going to be in that, what we term the low plane, the super low plane. That, that is real penetrating flight, guys. Unbelievable flight. Yeah, so if, if you're someone that has, you know, ha has trouble on your downswing and you feel like you're, you're all over the place with your trail arm, this will, will get rid of all that. You just can't do it. You, you can't move your arm about if you're doing what I'm saying. What it does for me, guys, is it takes all the movement off the golf club, off the golf ball. No movement on that golf ball. That, for all intents and purposes, is a perfectly straight golf shot. No movement on it whatsoever. And, it, and it's that. It feels like this. It feels like a, a windscreen wiper here. But at that level. Clearly, I'm not on that level, but that's my, that's my intention. Now I'm only three quarters swinging it guys because I'm I'm still getting used to it. But that's a real hard push down. Come on, five o'clock nose. That's it. Oh, it's just the, the contact is so different, the ball flight's so different. It's scary. Because you get in here and think I ain't never gonna get back, but you just gotta trust it. And, and, and the way you can trust it, guys, is here. It doesn't matter here if we hit a few flubbers. I haven't hit one yet. Uh, but it's scary. I mean, I've been down to like probably 75% you know, efficiency on the shot, but it still go dead straight. But just a little scary. Only because I'm not used to it. Thinking about it, thinking. Now that's everything put together, and that's a really good shot. Okay, guys, these are intricacies of 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 the protocol. They're just uh, fine tuning. I mean, the backswing is normally this. Well, this is just an addition to it where we're putting more down pressure. Well, I'll full swing here and I'll put a lot of pressure, a lot of down pressure, a lot of radius lock and a lot of five o'clock nose. Everything was, I had two out of three there, but I just... Again, multitask thinking is tough for me at my age. I mean, I just lost the five o'clock nose. And of course, the, what happens is the, um, the quality of the strike drops down, you know, 15%. Of course, that, that, that nose is not there. Okay, come on, Jase. Yeah, guys, so they're just a couple of points.
you want to build your strength up, just come and practice out of Australian crabgrass. Just kills the club. All right, full shot. Everything. All points of the protocol, full swing. There it is, guys, and that's hammered. That is hammered. Whew. Ooh, I like that. You just got to have the confidence. Then I thought, okay, I don't care what I do here, but just got to have the confidence to do it. It's early days. <laughs> And he was doing it yesterday. Come on, keep that neck, the radius in place. Oh, that's just perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Guys, I'm still learning it. You guys that are taking it on the golf course and playing with it, I mean, that's unbelievable. I go out and play a few batches of four holes. You know, I might do a, you know, two batches of four holes. Um, because I want to build the confidence and I want to play those holes perfectly. And I can do that. I've got an eight hole concentration factor. I did 12 the other day and they, they were just never missed a shot. Right, come on. Five o'clock nose. Pressure down. Radius lock. All right, we've got to get some slap released. Remember, the club goes this way, guys. Arms go, hands go to the ball, club goes that way. You don't want your, you don't want the club face going that way. Club face goes that way, you get a spoon effect. The club face has got to go towards the target. Hands go there, club face there. Oh, look, I just know what it is. It's just going to take a while to ingrain it. But when you get that contact, it's just something else. Really something else. And to think at my age I can actually now hit the ball better than I did 40 years ago. It really is that, that good. It was a perfect golf shot. Okay, last shot. Always nice to finish on a perfect shot. Okay guys, just a couple of little different bits. And we'll keep doing that because that's all we've got to do now is just, just embed the protocol and some little variations and little snippets that uh, that we need um, just hang on a bit guys sorry to be out of frame come on change just going to hit a couple of drivers What if, if you ask Mo Norman, you say, what's the difference between, between that swing and your five iron swing, Mo? You just say 100 yards. No difference in the swing. Guys, I just find the driver easier to hit because it's teed up and I've just always found the driver easier to hit. But I don't change anything, as you can see. This relationship's still here. There's no stretching for it. What I am doing is putting the club dead centre behind the golf ball. Well, I normally have it inside the golf ball, the toe inside the ball, I've always done that. But Mr X got me putting it right in behind the ball. And uh, 
That's my quarter difference. That's just laser. Laser. And that's dead into the wind, so. Okay, really five o'clock nose around the body. One more. And try and get longer arms through the ball. Guys, you know, there's no question in my mind that the stiffer the shaft, the straighter you'll hit the ball. I mean, this is a 300 CPM shaft, triple X. It's another shaft that I've got in another PRGR head. And it's one of the American boutique manufacturers, um, RT Technologies, out of Lake Charles, uh, Louisiana. And uh, they make the highest quality shafts, I think, in the world. This is called the Zeus, Z-E-U-S. Just unbelievable. It's a very, very stiff shaft, but you hit it through the eye of a needle. You just gotta time it. I mean, guys, that's bowling only stuff. That is bowling only stuff. The face never moves when you've got that so little torque. I think these are about only about 2 degrees or 1.8 degrees of radial torque in these shafts. They're for power swingers, but I just like the accuracy of it. But that's just... Whew. Mr. X getting me in behind the, uh, the centre of the club, is, I've never done that in my life. Just slipped a little bit with my feet, but still went dead straight. And the long wet grass here, guys, it's tough without spikes on. Just hit a couple more drives. Ooh, that was good. And a little bit of five o'clock nose, not enough, it didn't have enough. Still went dead straight. Come on. Okay, they're only they're not they're not full swings guys because I'm still you know just hurting a little bit with my lower back but they're just so straight and play with those all day. Okay just a couple of things to work on guys. Long video but I think there's some good stuff in there. <laughs>